7.2. In 7.2, we're going to continue with estimating mu, but here's the big difference. Now sigma, the population standard deviation, is unknown. So S will typically be given. Sometimes you might need to calculate it, but typically it will be given. Now, when we estimated mu in 7.1, to find or calculate the margin of error, we used the Z sub C table, which is over here, and we talked about that in the last section. Well, now that sigma is unknown, we can no longer use the Z score. We have to now use what is called a T score. So we switch from Z to T. Well, that means then, the t value is x bar minus mu divided by s divided by the square root of n. And then one thing that we're going to be discussing, and I'll show you here in a minute, it's on a table. It's what's called the degrees of freedom. And all you really need to know is that you're going to take n minus 1. Okay, so what we're going to do is talk about the student's t distribution, which is also known as the t table. So you can find that in the front of your book or the back of the book or in the appendix on 24. Appendix 24, it just depends on where it is in your book. Now this is what it's going to look like. It says critical value for students T distribution. Now I know this is kind of hard to see, so hopefully you're looking at it in your own book. We're not going to concern ourselves at this time with where it says one tail area or two tail areas. We are concerned right here, which is the DF. And again, the DF you find, here's the DF, and you find that by taking N minus 1. And then we're also concerned with the C, which means how confident you are. Now, this is 0 .500. That would be the same thing as being 50% confident. 0 0.750 is 75% confident. Here's 80%, 85, 90, 95%, 98%, 99%, or 99.9% .9 confident. And again, that will be given in the problem. So this is where we will go to locate the number we need to use to calculate the margin of error. Now, all of that I just explained is what is being explained in these bullets right here. So now what I want to do is go to the next page of notes, and I'm going to show you exactly how to use the student's T distribution. Let me get this set up a little bit better. Okay, it says find T sub C. So remember, when sigma is known, you use Z sub C. When sigma is unknown, you use T sub C, which is the student's T distribution. It says for a 95% confidence, so that tells me C is 95%. Well, on the student's T distribution, they write that as a decimal. So you're going to be looking for 0 0.900. Oh, I'm sorry, it's 5. 0.950. Sorry about that. For a T distribution with a sample size of N equals 15. So here's N equals 15, but as I showed you on the table, N is not there. What we need is the DF, which is N minus 1 or 14. So these are the two values that we will look for to find our T sub C value. So I'm going to go to my student's T distribution. And I'm going to find 14 is here, and 0 .900 is here, which is the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th column. So on 14, I want to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5th column. So 14 and 0 .90 is where those would meet. I'll just do this because there is your DF of 14, and there is your confidence level of 0 .90. Oh, wait, it was 95. Oh, so sorry. Why I have 90 stuck in my head, I don't know. It's 0 .950. Sorry. That's an oops. So we're going to use 2.145. So T sub C is... 2.145. Okay, 
Let's do another one, and hopefully this time I won't be stuck on 90% when it's not what it is. Okay, find T sub C. So we're trying to find T sub C for 99%. So I'm looking for 0 0.990 for a T distribution with a sample size of 45. But I don't need the sample size. I need the DF, which will be 45 minus 1 or 44. So I'm going to look for 44 on my table, and I'm going to look for 0 0.900. So I'm going to look for 44. I come down here, and I see 35, I see 40, I see 45. There's no 44. So read the small print at the bottom. It says, for degrees of freedom, not in the table, Use the closest DF that is smaller. So 44 is between 40 and 45, but we are to use the one that is smaller. So we're going to use 40 as our DF. And then our confidence is 99%. So I'm going to use 0 0.990, which is the second to the last column. So that gets me to 40 and up to 0 .990. So 2.704 is what we would use. And that's how you use the student's T distribution. So now let's take that information and we're gonna look to hack, actually calculate the margin of error. So notice it's T sub C and it's S and then we're gonna create the confidence interval, which is the same, x bar minus e, x bar plus e. So, here is an example. Assume the number of calories is normally distributed, and we have x bar is 244.5, so there's that value. We have s equals 21.73, which is that value. Create a 99% confidence interval, so there's my confidence interval, or not my interval, I apologize, my confidence. To estimate the population mean calories in three ounces of french fries. Okay, now notice I put a star over here by the s. Because the key in chapter seven is recognizing when sigma is known and when sigma is unknown. If sigma is known, population parameter, then you use Z sub C. Since sigma is unknown and we're using S, then that tells me I'm going to find T sub C and use the student's T distribution. And that is key in these problems. So be sure that you pay attention to whether sigma is known or not. So let's see, I also need n, which, there we go. Here's my sample, and there's eight of those, so n equals eight. Okay, so to use the student's t distribution, I need to look at this as a decimal, 0 0.990, and then instead of n, I need to know the df which is n minus one or seven. So seven and 0 0.990 is gonna allow me to find my T sub C. So I'm gonna go to seven and 0 0.990 is the second to the last one, so 3.499. So my T sub C is 3.499. Now I have all the values that I need in order to calculate my margin of error. So my margin of error is T sub C 3.499 times S, because sigma was unknown, divided by the square root of N, which is eight. So we're gonna do that calculation and when you do, round it to two decimal places, normal rounding rolls, and you get 26.88. So that's my margin of error. So my confidence interval is X bar, which was given as 244.5 minus the margin of error, and 244.5 plus the margin of error. 
So when I do that subtraction, I get 217.62. And I also get 271.38. And then if you were asked to explain that, you would say something to the effect of, I am 99% confident the average calories in three ounces of french fries is 217.62 to 271.38 calories. And that would be that in sentence form. So on the next page of notes, you'll find that we have some more examples because I think the more that you do, the more comfortable you get with it. Assume the number of women representatives is normally distributed. A state representative wants to estimate the number of women representatives per state legislature. The number of women representatives for 17 states, so that's why I know there's 17 plus, if it didn't say that, you can just count. Here's your sample size, there's 17 of them. Find the 90%, so C is 90% confidence interval of the mean population. Now, it does not give me sigma, it does not give me X bar. So sigma is unknown, so in this particular problem, I would need to calculate x bar, which I've already gone ahead and done that for you. That's adding them all up and dividing by 17. I would also need to calculate s, which I've given here as well. Now on how to calculate s, that would be referred back to chapter three. Now I will say on the test, you will not be required to calculate S, but sometimes you are in some of these problems that you do. So again, what is key for you to recognize here is that sigma is unknown. So my standard deviation is S, which tells me then I am going to locate and find T sub C from the student's T distribution. Now, how I do that, I don't need N, I need the DF, which is N minus one, 17 minus one is 16, so I need the 16, and then the confidence, 90%, would be 0 .900, so these are the two values I'm gonna look for on my student's T distribution. So, I'm going to look for 16, and then point nine zero zero is one, two, three, four. It's the fifth block. So one, two, three, four, five. That's one point seven four six. Now that I have that number, I can calculate the margin of error. It's going to be one point seven four six times the standard deviation, twenty eight point six nine divided by the square root of n, and n is 17. So I'm gonna put that into my calculator, and when I do, I calculate 12.15. Now that I have my margin of error, I can create the confidence interval. That's x bar, 33.35, minus the margin of error, 12.15, and then 33.35 plus the margin of error. So when I subtract that, I get 21.2, and then when I add those, I get 45.5. And then again, if I were asked to explain, I would say I am 90% confident the average number of women per state legislature is 21.2 to 45.5 women. And then the last example for this section of notes, I just wanna point out mainly the wording here and the sentence structure. It says, assume the weight of dogs is normally distributed for a sample of 25 dogs, so N equals 25, 
and it says that those 25 dogs have a mean weight of 29.3 pounds and a standard deviation of 5.6 pounds. Find the 95% confidence interval of the mean population. So I put C equals 95%. Now, I have so many students where they, here's where they mess up. These 25 dogs have a mean weight of 29.3. So not the population, but those 25 dogs have a mean weight. So that would be X bar equals 29.3. And then the key also is so many times students will see standard deviation. So they'll put sigma equals 5.6, but you have to be careful of the sentence structure. It is saying this sample of 25 dogs. So these 25, not the population, but these 25 have the mean weight of 29.3 pounds. These 25 dogs also have a standard deviation of 5.6, which makes this S. And since this is S, that tells me that sigma is unknown, which means then we will use T sub C, the student's T distribution. So we need the DF, which would be 25 minus 1 or 24. And then 95% would be 0.9, whoops, 950. And that will give us our T sub C. So 24 is right here. And I need 95, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blocks over. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blocks over. So 2.064. So my margin of error is 2.064 times S, 5.6, divided by the square root of N, and N is 25. So when you put that into your calculator, you get 2.31. So now we can create the confidence interval, X bar, 29.3, minus the margin of error, and X bar, 29.3, plus the margin of error. And so when I do that subtraction and addition, I get 26.99 and 31.61. And again, if you were asked to explain that, I am 95% confident the average weight of dogs is 26.99 to 31.61 pounds. Now, that completes this set of notes. I do want to show you kind of a, a chart that I have created for my students that seems to be helpful on estimation. Chapter 7 is all about estimating mu. And the key when you estimate mu is recognizing when sigma is known or when sigma is unknown. When sigma is known, sigma is known, you use Z sub C in your margin of error, which is this small table here. When sigma is unknown, then you use the student's T distribution, this table right here, so notice Z sub C or T sub C because sigma is known, sigma is unknown. So this is the key in chapter seven. Now, once you've calculated the margin of error, then it all goes back to then being able to create the confidence interval, which is X bar minus E and X bar plus E. But again, the whole key on estimating is whether sigma is known or sigma is unknown. So be sure that you're paying close attention to that.